Hi, and welcome, or welcome back if you're coming from our first episode. So since I released the first episode, Plazas and Promenades has come out, uh, and there is some new roads that were added as a part of the free update for Plazas and Promenades. So we're gonna be utilizing these. I just wanted to talk about them for just a split second. A lot of them are bus related or potentially even more design based. So when it comes to detailing our city, we'll have a lot more options. And so I just wanted to bring that up because these were uh, not included previously. So I just wanted to touch on them. Uh, every time there's a new DLC that drops that's bigger like plazas and promenades, there's always a free content update that comes with it. So even if you don't buy the DLCs, you can always expect something great whenever they drop a new content pack because you know that you can get at least something free. They're rebalancing something, something's being added. So uh, just be excited for that and let's get into the city. All right, so here we are back in our town. I've had to restart this recording a couple times, so hopefully I don't forget to tell you guys anything. If I do, please tell me in the comments. Uh, if I have skipped over something that you think is important or that you don't understand, please do not hesitate to let me know. Now, two things I wanna go over before we get into actually kind of building out our grid and I kind of explain some ways to maybe break up that grid so that way it's not as uh, of an eyesore because building a grid can get very Boring. That's why a lot of people don't like it. Oh God, Ugh. grid cities. So uh, there's some ways to kind of add a bit more character to them. And as you make your grid less uh, uniform, you can actually add a lot of character while still being really efficient. So first thing is first, we're gonna talk about pollution. So pollution obviously caused by factories and by our sewage outflow pipe. Now our sewage outflow pipe isn't pumping out a lot of sewage right now because we don't have a lot of buildings that are really creating pollution. Uh, obviously suck up the polluted water, that's bad. It's going to flow out the river and off the map and it'll become some other city's problem, not ours. However, the ground pollution will stay with us. Now, if we were to destroy all of these factories or move them, let's say we move them down over here, right? Then we can actually reduce the ground pollution. It will slowly go away and it will start to pop up over here. You'll always have like a little bit from whatever factories you have, so just keep that in mind. But uh, in order to reduce the pollution's uh, negative side effects, just make sure that everything is built away from it. So this is one of the reasons why factories need to stay away from residential. Uh, commercial could actually be right here, but residential can cannot. Residential uh, will, will get sick, the people will get sick, and they will start dying, and that's no good. We don't want that. Another thing, to uh, keep in mind with ground pollution is that if we were to do a water tower instead of our uh, sucking our water out of the actual water, uh, which by the way, you cannot actually pollute the water from factories. So we could have a factory right here and this water pump will be totally fine. You will not get your citizens sick. You'll be a okay. So if we were to place a water tower right here and hook it up to our grid, even if it's far out from like the, the fade, even if we're sucking it a little bit, it will still get people sick and they will still die. So it's really important to make sure that your water is as clean and far away from pollution as possible of its pollution type. So for example, this can be next to factories, this cannot. This can be next to sewage outflow pipe, this cannot. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. There is another type of pollution though, and that is noise pollution. Noise pollution will also make your citizens sick. Only residential though, because commercial buildings will also produce it. So I don't wanna put any more commercial over here because I don't wanna get my citizens sick from all the commercial that we've integrated into our little neighborhood. The reason we did this was to make sure that there was a little bit less traffic actually being produced from these residential homes because they don't have to drive. Uh, any way you can give your citizens or Sims an ability to get somewhere without getting in their car, they will take it um, as long as it's uh, somewhat efficient. If you give them walking paths, uh, they will they will use them. If we were to build a big walking bridge from here over to here, they will walk uh, instead of taking their car to work. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them will. So it's really important uh, to, to mix in some commercial to residential. This happens in real life as well. However, we have to be mindful of the noise pollution that's pr producing because that will that'll make our sims sick and notice how look at how much these are producing right even their wind turbines right the our water intake our water outflow they, they all everything produces high traffic also highway roads produce a lot as well but if we were to have a lot of traffic come through here even this road will start to glow right so we don't want that i want to make sure our citizens are are, are nice and healthy so now that all that's out of the way, let's start building. Now, as we went over last episode, this did not 
right, so I'm gonna build this out. We built this in thinking of two lane roads. However, this is gonna be a four lane road and four lane roads are a little bigger. As we notice, they, our zones start to overlap. Now, uh, neither road really takes priority when the zones overlap, right? Like if we were to paint this all green right here using our paint bucket tool, there's other tools. There's the brushes as well, which we can use. I'm right clicking to remove, left clicking to paint. Uh, this is really good for like curvy road. Uh, I like to use the grid. It's just a blocky, blocky tool. Um, neither road really takes priority. I might prioritize the higher density road. I'm not really too sure about that. But however, if we were to like, let's say, zone that part blue, this part green, this part green, this part blue, this part blue, this part green, you know, you kind of get the gist. It will build four out in whatever direction you really kind of tell it to. So it neither tile really own, or neither road really owns this tile. It can be either or. So just so you know, uh, that that can be important for like kind of understanding when you start uh, building your grid out and you're trying to make it not uniform, just to kind of understand how your residential areas will actually build out. So uh, we're gonna build a little road along the coast here, and we're gonna start our road. Let's uh, you know, let's. that road back and we're gonna bring this out to right about here i want this road to kind of follow the edge here notice how there is a, a texture difference right we have the dirt and we have the grass i want this road to follow that so we're gonna build it with dirt uh we just need to be mindful of our money here and we can just press play if we ever um start to feel like we don't have enough money because we are making money sometimes the game will do this thing where it says the distance is too short or something like that it doesn't know what it's talking about let's uh let's get one thing straight here is that the uh, road tool in this game sometimes is a little a little funky there's lots of mods in the steam workshop to deal with it I'm just trying to follow I'm using the freeform road tool, not the uh, curved road tool. The curved road tool is really good when you're trying to actually finish whatever curved section you're trying to do because it'll create that perfect angle, right? However, in situations like this, using the freeform tool because this is so curvy um, is really useful. And there, there's other uses for both as well, but that's just kind of like my general advice for those. Now notice how the terrain height is gonna start kind of making these cliffs off of here. Um, if you really want to get detailed with it, you can start, um, you could start uh, doing some terrain management if we had landscaping unlocked, which we'll get to later, but we don't right now. And I want to create this road. So we're going to leave it as is, and maybe we'll go back and fix it down the road, but that's okay. This is a, um, sometimes there's like a destroyed or abandoned props that are in the map. Uh, there's like a cabin. There's some vehicles on some maps. This is an old abandoned dock. You can keep it. You can destroy it. I'm going to try to avoid touching it for as long as possible. Uh, you really can't do anything with it. Sadly, I wish there was something cool you could do with it, but it's not. If you ever like are sick of, ah, gosh, I feel like this is bending at the wrong place or wrong way and it feels kind of funky, you can right click and it'll completely reset. And notice how it is. it feels like it's, you've just, you're playing vanilla again. And if you want to, or not vanilla, sorry, you're starting with a new road again, right? Like it seems like you just clicked in now with uh, trying to continue building off the road. And uh, if you wanna go back to uh, how you were building it before, you just build straight off, right? And then you, like it, then you can pick your angle and get to work, right? So these episodes are gonna start getting a little shorter. But a bit more quick as we build this out, and I'm hoping to get them out more regularly. That's about as far as I'm gonna build out right now. And the reason I want to wanted to build this, and the reason I'm following the terrain, is this will help us break up that grid, and it'll make this feel like it has a bit more character to it. Like it won't just be like chunky, blocky edges on the edge of the map, right? They'll feed into, the grid will feed into this road that's kind of trailing along the edge. And we could upgrade this road if we wanted to. I'm kind of contemplating whether or not I should have made this a four lane road. But if we should have, that's okay, we'll fix it down the road. And that'll be a good learning experience for 
all of us. You know, I'm just really excited that um, to, to start and teach this series because City Skylines has so much to offer people. There's so many people who are interested in it, want to play it. And uh, I'm really excited to uh, teach people because uh, it's uh, teaching is a uh, we're going to just by the way, we're just going to drag these roads straight down into this road and we're probably going to run into an issue here soon. So I'm really hoping to go because there's some teaching types about that. We're not. Uh, sometimes the node gets a little funky. So for example, I'm going to try to actually make it uh, not work properly, right? So notice how we actually can't build it straight down now. I forced this node to go here. And notice how this node's in a weird spot. These, these are all around circles in the nodes. This is where cars and traffic will change lanes if you have multiple lanes, right? Um, it doesn't want to build straight because it wants to go into that node. It wants to go in that node so bad. And I can't build it here because you can't have intersections too close to another node because the intersections are nodes. And so it creates this weird dynamic, right? And so we could build it like this and that'll give your grid some character. So if you like that, go ahead and do that. However, the alternative would be to build this road outwards, right? Figure out an in-between point for where you want it. So notice how it's trying to snap in between there and there. We could turn off road guidelines and notice how that goes away. I'm going to build that there because that's about a halfway in between. And then we can use our freeform road tool. Have that connect in if we want to. And we can make that look a little different if we wanted to. So if we want to do that, make it more straight, we can do that too. So that if you ever run into that problem, just build the road that you're trying to build into the curved road out first and sometimes it'll take some building and destroying to kind of get it to look nice if that's what you're after and if you're not that's okay too you can just leave it uh, plain as can be uh there is no way in the vanilla game to kind of make roads prioritize where you want zoning so they kind of will just be goofy like this if you're playing modded there's a mod to a uh, zoning adjuster which will uh, allow you to say this is the road that everything should be zoned off of first and then if there's no way to zone off this road then zone off Right. Uh, however, the base game doesn't have that. Now, if you notice, I am not building an intersection right here. However, I will build one probably right here. Hmm. You know, actually, we might. I we're gonna change this. We're gonna we're gonna adjust this. Now, we built these grids in 20 units before, and that's because I think that's a good unit size. However, I really like the idea of having this coastal road. And so, see, notice how it's really trying to snap that six, uh, that 169 angle. We can build it straight down and, it, and it'll, it'll uh, bend the road to really kind of meet your needs. So it might not look as nice at the end of the day, but uh, again, just try it. Trial and error will really help you. Um, obviously, this is a bit longer than 20 units now. If we want to, we could add a road in here. We don't, they, they, don't, they don't have to be 20 units. Honestly, breaking them up into different sizes will, uh, we, we did some eminent domain and destroyed some homes, but will help uh, your grid and your city kind of look a little bit less uniform. And sometimes that can be hard to look at uh, after a long period of time. And sometimes you'll notice the grid kind of isn't square, right? And this might bother some people. Uh, it bothers me. So a way to fix that, and, and it's doing this because of how nodes are placed on the roads. Like it's saying, ah, this road is this length. It's like a half node uh, length size different in order for it to connect up. So it, it tries to center the grid on the road rather than lining it up with other grids. So uh, an easy way to fix that would be to destroy this road, bring this out to about here. So now you have uh, that gridded up to there, and then you build that last little section to there, and it will prioritize this section because you've tried, you've told the road, I want you to go here. Okay, well now I want you to extend. Okay, but you said here first, so we're gonna make it so it's here, right? That's how that works. So now we have, uh, we've ex we've extend uh, extended and kind of done that. And the reason that we're not gonna build an intersection, we might build an intersection right here, but we're not gonna connect every road up to that. Having too many intersections on these main roads, these four lane roads, or even just any of your main corridors, 
uh, can kind of create some gridlock. Uh, it can create some congestion. Cars don't like to stop in here. And if there's ever any traffic backup, it can really cause some problems. So being mindful of how many intersections you're placing on certain roads uh, can be really important. Uh, in residential communities like this, you can build as many as you want. Like we can build one here, we can build one here, we can build one here if we wanted to. We, I mean, we can just throw roads down. Obviously you start to lose efficiency and like you're, well, okay, why do you need a road there? You could have a house there instead, right? But you could do that and the traffic flow will be totally a-okay, right? So I think we'll probably have a connection point right there and we'll have a connection point right here. And that'll kind of be it for uh, connection points on this side because we want this to be a traveling road, right? We want people to use this road to get from point A to point B and not have to be stopped or bothered by incoming and oncoming traffic every 10 units. So that's probably how we'll keep it. We might, I might do an intersection there and we don't have to make it so it goes through all the way. We can eventually add a walking path so that way pedestrians could use this if they wanted to, but in order to reduce car traffic, and maybe some uh, congestion on this intersection, we don't have to pull this all the way through and make this a through road because then people might stop using the roads we want them to use as actual traveling roads and they'll start driving through the residential communities and we don't want that, right? So we're gonna leave this just like this, but we will have this connecting point up here because we, we kind of only have two for this, this area. That might, that might be beneficial in the long run. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna have these two connections right here. This road will connect up down here. So you'll have to kind of connect this way to get through. We might even make this because I don't think there will be that much traffic. So we'll probably connect this up. However, I don't think we'll have the grid connect up that way. So we'll just have this end up in this three-way T-bone right here. And they can figure out which direction they want to go from there. That way it's not a straight shot. Those straight shots are really where cars like to take advantage of that. Now, if you notice, because we built this grid, it doesn't line up with this roundabout because we placed this roundabout kind of willy nilly. And I did that on purpose so I can start to show you guys how grids can have variations. So we're going to destroy that road. If you have the parks DLC, this would be a fantastic spot to start building a park uh, because you have this breakup in the grid and you're going to have a bunch of open, weirdly spaced area. And uh, don't feel like you need to be super efficient and like slam these roads together. You can space them out. You could have gaps in between each one if you really wanted to in place a row of trees or something, anything really. Uh, however, I'm for the efficiency sake and just for the logic of the game, I'm going to continue to kind of build these like really efficient grids for right now uh, until we start getting those parks DLCs because we'll start getting some better things and resources to really kind of build those up. And you can build a cool, cute little park in this area. And I think we will do that. Uh, that isn't included in the parks DLC. Um, however, I'm just going to no, not gonna worry about it. I didn't like the way that road looked uh, when we built that road into it. It kind of changed the shape of it. And uh, I didn't really like that. So we're going to go like this and then I'm going to Just kind of re-give it a normal. So we're going to go down this road. This is 10 units from here to here. We're going to go down 10 more units. So that'll be 20 units. We're going to create an intersection here because we don't want to create an intersection that's too close to the roundabout. Connect that up. Have that be a straight shot down. start building this out. Now we can connect that up there. This is at a weird angle because it tried to snap to a node. Notice how it's trying to snap to that node. Sometimes you'll get that. It, it's still saying it's a 90 degree angle, but it's really not. It's it's really not. It's more like a 91 degree angle, right? And so that grid's not gonna be perfectly square. And if that doesn't bother you, then go for it. But if it does bother you, like it bothers me, I'm not gonna build that there. And this is just gonna be a big open box. And we'll eventually put a park in. We can put some walking paths through here. And if we have the parks DLC, we can put park entrances to start making some money. And that will add park to this area, which houses love parks. And we'll get into that in the next episode. This episode's all about expanding and we're gonna be expanding rapidly. We spent about half of our cash on these roads too. This road right here 
will be a four lane road. I'm gonna upload it right now so that way we think about that. as we're expanding. Notice how I've broken up the grid here. You know, typically this was going down all the way. I've instead stopped that and I've made it so that this is the connection point north to south. That forces traffic to think about, okay, where do I want to go? And that will really help them pick and choose and split up potentially instead of all kind of grid locking up onto one road, right? You want to give them as much road as possible that's really good and efficient for traveling, but sometimes it's good to break up that monotony and allow them to start spreading out as we hit over here because this will mostly be residential. There's not going to be a lot of touristy hot spots down over here, so there really won't be as much of a need for this thoroughfare um as we we go down so something important to keep in mind we're gonna have this road to go all the way down hoping that i can build this straight and i can that's great that will dead end out onto this road i probably should have built this as a four lane road i didn't got it's okay though we're a little, uh, almost out of money so i'm gonna start hitting play however all of these roads that we place they cost money to upkeep so you're going to see our income start to go down and we are in need of some more industrial areas. So let's zone some more. Well, well, well. When we destroyed these road or when we destroyed these homes, we accidentally destroyed our power grid. And thankfully, a new home has been rebuilt right here on this one by one strip. It is a four by one home. And so that's reconnected our power. But that that's something really important to make sure that we have uh, our, our power connection. So I'm just gonna let this run. I'm gonna build a road out this way. End right there for now. Roads uh, don't have to have ends, obviously. We've um, had other roads that do that too. They will turn around at the end of the road if they need. So I'm gonna let the game uh, play on fast forward for a minute. If you notice that our citizens are calling for trash services and we obviously don't have enough money now because we spent all our money on roads, but that's okay. We're still making money and that's the important thing. We're making about a thousand a week. So we can just sit here and wait. Our citizens will not die without trash pickup. They don't like that they don't have trash pickup. It might start making them sick if they don't get trash pickup soon. Uh, however, it only costs 4,000. So we're gonna build one of these trash uh, dumps and we're gonna put it right about here. Something um, important to think about in your city is where are places like your fire station? Where is your city dump? And thinking about where they are realistically, will help you plan and figure out where you should put them in game. So for example, your fire stations are a lot of times are on roads that are maybe slightly busy, but they're not main roads. So for example, the fire station by my house is on a road known as a collector road. A collector road uh, is a road that takes traffic from residential roads, such as a road that uh, is in a suburb or that your homes are on and it'll take roads and they'll get dumped onto that collector. And that collector will take them out to an arterial road. And that's the main road in the city, right? You can think of like a two lane, heavy traffic, busy all the time. And that's what the collector roads do. And that's where my fire stations are at in nearby my house. So when we think about where those fire stations are in real life, we can also start to think about dumps and other things that we have. And something that I always like to do with uh, my dumps and my other service buildings is put them kind of like on a road like this. It's a dead end road. They're not going to have to fight with traffic on this road. And the intersection that they're going to be going out to is not going to be highly traffic. They're going to be able to get out to this section if they want to, or in and around the city very quickly and efficiently if they want to as well. Um, when we look at the health care services building, when we have enough money, you'll be able to actually see some heat maps as I begin to place it. And so that will be really helpful for you guys to understand like how far away and where you need to position things. But we'll go over that in a minute. So let's place this dump. And I'm placing it pretty close to the expressway. 
the highway because then if they want to go out this way and like let's say there is more city over this direction they can hop on that highway really fast if they need or want to you notice we are starting to have some power issues electricity availability so there's two options we have we could buy another power plant which could be a wind turbine or a coal power plant or we can go into our budget and just increase the cost of power. We can go up to 150% if we want to. It'll cost more, not as efficient. However, we don't have the money for a power plant right now. So we'll just increase the cost of power and you can re really uh, fine tune with it, but I think that's where we'll leave it for now. We shouldn't have too much other to worry about. And if you remember from the pre end of the previous episode, make sure your taxes are set to 12%. 12% is the magic number. If you ever find yourself going bankrupt in city skylines, raise those taxes to 12%. And if they're already at 12%, then you have another issue going on. And this budget panel will be your best friend to figure out what your expenses, what are you spending too much money on, right? Always make sure that if you are running out of money, pull down your services, pull down how much you're paying for them, right? So we're paying 50%. It's the lowest amount that we can for our water services, but our water service amount is still just heavily in the green. So we know we're fine. We are being as efficient as possible in our water. Sometimes waiting for money in this game can be a little tedious. So be patient. Sometimes it's fun to just sit and look at your city. I don't really like these one by one homes, so we'll probably go through and destroy a lot of these and rezone this road. It's probably going to build a bunch of these one by ones here because there's really not much else they can do now that I've put this road in. So that'll be fine. And honestly, if you've ever gone to the end of a city block, you'll notice that sometimes the lot sizes of the homes look a little different. And I made sure to put this one here so we could connect the power back up. Great. Now we can build all this out as a four by four. And just keep in mind that, you know, it's not the evenest terrain. So as these homes come in, you might start to see these weird cliffs and rock areas. And if you ever start to see these and you have issues with them, you'll be able to place trees on them. But we don't have any of that stuff unlocked yet, so we won't worry about that for now. So we're about up to $8,000. We're up to $9,000 now. We are going to have to place an elementary school as well. Those are going to be things we want to do before we uh, hit our next milestone, because once we hit our next milestone of tiny town or worthy village, sorry, we were on the worthy village ones. Once we hit the worthy village one, they're going to start wanting more from us. They're going to start wanting fire department services. They're going to want to start police services uh, and they don't want any of that yet. So it's really important that we place these services down now before we already can't afford even more services. So. We can now afford our medical clinic, our medical clinic and our school. If you look as the buildings over here, everything is gray. It, cre it creates the ever, uh, education heat map or the layers. So we can place the school. And when we go to place the school, notice how the roads start to glow green. Now these are the areas of service that uh, will reach the school. However, if Let's say your home is way over here on this road. If this wasn't a one way road and it wasn't um, green, you you could still go to school there. It's just the homes in the green area will gain a little bit of a buff and will have easier access to it and will be more likely to utilize that structure and building. This is really important for fire services because fire services can help upgrade buildings and all these services can help upgrade buildings if it's in this, uh, the roads area of effect for a lot of services that can help upgrade the buildings because the buildings not only need education and educated people, but they also need lots of services in order to upgrade and higher upgraded buildings can have more density, more capacity, things of that nature, really beneficial for upgrading your buildings. So we are gonna place this school. I'm gonna place this school because we're gonna be having residential down over here. We also have residential over here. I'm gonna place the school right here. It's not right next to all of this stuff. Heck, it's probably not even in the power grid. It's not, look at that. So we're gonna connect the power grid up just like that. Eventually we'll probably put some commercial in here. I don't wanna do that right now because I'm 
I'm trying to explain and show you guys how this works. So we have expanded our power grid, our, our water and our power grid over to this elementary school. This elementary school will be able to service this area and this area. So it'll have a much larger area of effect if we place it over here rather than if we build it over here, start building residential neighborhoods over here and then they aren't in the area of effect of this. You, I don't like to build these services on these big roads because that's a lot of traffic being forced onto this road already because it's our collector like road or our arterial road. There's already a lot of traffic on this road and then they're also trying to stop and utilize the buildings on it. Now you might think that's a good thing. Commercial buildings it is, they like lots of traffic. It's the main destination for those places. However, these roads are already gonna be really loud as well. You don't wanna put residential on them. However, you don't want lots of vehicles coming in and out, especially like for fire services or police services and then having to fight with traffic. You wanna be able to give them the opportunity to pick a different route if they want to. So I like to build them off, but very close to those roads. So now we have that as access. We are struggling with our power, so we can't really afford another power plant. So let's try to crank up the budget for that. And if we click in our education panel, we notice that our elementary school availability, our capacity is at 150 because we have one school and our eligible students are at 80. So we only have 80 eligible students. We are still struggling with power. It's gonna be flickering on and off. Our next priority is 100% gonna be our wind turbine. Fighting with power in the early game, very, it's going to be an issue probably for most of you. A-OK. -okay. Zone some more residential. This will eat up our power. However, it'll bring in more taxes so we can start building more buildings. Or, I'm sorry, more buildings, more, um, well, yes, more buildings, more services, more power plants, things of that nature. I'm running on three times speed right now. If I haven't already, I'll be fast forwarding the VOD until we get 6,000. Sometimes it's a waiting game. And sometimes it's nice to have that waiting game because you kind of just get to sit here and look and watch your city. Do it in a nice way if you really want to. Get to know your Sims, your citizens. Look at this person. Let's see who this is. Piper Harris, uneducated child. You can click on this, it tells you where they live, where they're going. She's an elementary school student at elementary school. Look at that, already utilizing the services. We just placed that down. You can also do the same thing with cars. You can see who the owner is. Charles Ward, he's in the car, resides way over here, right? He's a cleaner at Unlimited Goods, which is right here. He's driving home from work. Tells you where he's going, which is his home. You also click on the vehicles. You can click on the traffic route view. See how much of a load vehicles have, where they're going. There's lots of little details to this game. If you ever wondered like why when your city gets really big and everything starts to chug and you lose FPS, well, there's a lot of things this game's trying to process. So we're gonna build another wind, tur uh, wind turbine. Remember these do produce power, um, noise pollution, but that's okay because we are building this very far away from residential. Boom, we have placed our power plant. Drop that down to 100 and see if that is enough power. Should be. Uh, the reason that there's two bars is one is for daytime and one is for nighttime. I'm not playing with the day-night cycle on. I don't suggest you do either. I think it's cool for uh, an effect, but the day-night cycle can sometimes be a little hard to see. So if you like it, go for it. However, when it comes to, for me, at least for creating content, uh, it's a little hard for viewers to see sometimes in the night. So just keep that in mind. You notice there's a lot of traffic on these roads. The game does produce what's called dummy traffic. Uh, this is just traffic that is trying to get from point A to point B. So it spawns over here. Its goal is to not even stop in your city and is to leave the city on another outside connection. Maybe over here, over here, over here. And uh, it just spawns that there to make the game, your life uh, in the game more difficult, so. And more challenging. And it's pretty realistic, you know? you know? I live on one side of the state of Michigan in Grand Rapids, and my dad lives in Detroit. And I, when I go visit him, I have to take a highway that goes through Lansing. And so if this was Lansing, I would be one of those dummy traffic that would be traveling from point A to point B on the highway. So we have about 6,000. 
We have our elementary school. We do still need to build our medical clinic and we have enough power to start expanding to start making more money. So let's do that. I'm going to start by building some commercial buildings right here. I'm gonna build a four by four right there and see if those build up and see if they connect the power grid and it should. Oh, and the power grid is actually already connected from these residential areas. Sometimes it'll stretch really hard to connect those power grids. So we actually don't even need those lines. And we really didn't even need to zone those commercial areas. But I'm glad we did. So now we have that. Let's start building out our water a bit more. In real life, they would never build uh, water under uh, just public or I guess private land, really, like this. Uh, you can't, Also, you can't really do anything about these corner lots. Uh, any of you who are really trying to get that high efficiency grid, um, I regret to inform you that nothing can really go here. Just the logic of it. Uh, but they would never place that um, under the road because if they need to do any kind of work on the line, they'd have to go under your house. So just keep that in mind as well if you want uh, some realism. I am trying to maintain a bit of realism. If you're ever like struggling to place roads how you want them, Feel free to turn off all of the snap twos like that. We're going to be creating lots of redundancies because eventually we will turn on natural disasters and I will show you guys how to deal with those. That is something I have to deal with regularly on my Twitch stream, which you can follow below. So now that we've zoned a bit of that area, let's add some homes over here. Again, there is a rock right here. And we don't want to hurt that rock. So I am going to avoid zoning. Any of those. And we've hit our worthy village. I remember I said earlier that I was a little scared and I didn't want to hit worthy village because I would have to worry about multiple services. However, we got a cash injection when we hit our milestones. We get a little bit of a cash injection into our economy, a little bit of an investment from the city, from the state. I don't know who we're moving, but we get a little bit. That's important. Because now we can build our medical clinic, our fire clinic, or a police station. They all cost about the same. It should be all around $12,000. The medical clinic is about 10. So we could actually afford to build two of them. And we are gonna build two of them. I'm gonna stick the other clinic over here or the clinic over here by the elementary school. And that will cover the whole area. Now notice like a lot of these uh, extended parts of the community. So like over here, if I try to place it over here, notice how it doesn't actually reach. However, they will still use it. It's the closest one to them. They will utilize it. We also have our fire station. We're going to end up needing to build two of those. So I'm not going to touch that right now. We also need our police station for crime. Uh, police stations work in this game as... Um, a way to detain criminals, and then you can actually, I'm not sure if it's part of a DLC or not, but there's a prison. We'll see, is it in there? It's not in here. So there's actually a prison, and what the prison will do will, will be to rehabilitate criminals. It will actually, um, for, I believe the game works uh, in a way where if you have a criminal, they are predisposed to continue to create crime when they're not arrested, right? Or they can. I think there's a percentage chance that they will become rehabilitated every single time they get arrested. Uh, if they get sent to the prison, they are guaranteed rehabilitated. I believe that's how that works. If somebody knows a different way that they work, let me know so I know better so I can re-educate everyone else. Anywho, so our residential in uh, commercial industrial office zoning bars are telling us that we need more commercial and we're gonna put the commercial on these medium density roads because I think that is a better location for it than in the residential areas. So it keeps the noise pollution with the noise pollution. And don't you don't have to fear too much about noise pollution in uh, terms of low density commercial. However, once you start getting into high density commercial, you will. So just keep that all in mind. And once we place our fire stations, I think that's where we are going to call the episode for today. So let's get some money so we can start placing our fire stations. You're going to want to place two, I think. So fire stations will travel. The fire uh, trucks will travel from any fire station and they will go put out fires. Whichever one gets the, the call first, they will go do it. We need to increase our power budget. Our fire coverage 
if we don't get to it fast enough, the building will burn down and it'll have rubble and it'll have to be repaired. So, or it'll have to be torn down and something new will have to go there. So having uh, many local fire stations is really good and important. If you look around your community, you probably drive past maybe one or two pretty often. And you don't even really even kind of notice they're there, but they are very well spread out. You'd be surprised how many fire stations there really are in your community compared to other things like clinics or police stations. Even. Uh, and it's really important because they need to be able to respond as quickly as possible. So we're going to place the first fire station over here in the industrial area. Really important that the industrial area does get coverage because they uh, have a higher chance of lighting on fire, I believe. We've also unlocked districts and some other things at that milestone. We'll take a look at that at the end of the episode, and then we'll start the next episode by going through a bunch of those other uh, things we unlock at that milestone of Worthy Village, like policies. However, we're not going to touch that this episode. So we placed our first fire station. We're going to place one more. We have our power in a good spot. Remember to always pay attention to your power budget in the early game. Very helpful. Notice our water availability. We had it set to 50% is starting to go down. We're not zoning anything new, but just make sure to <laughs> keep that in mind that if you did follow along with me and you did put it at 50%, that you are going to probably have to adjust that. I'm going to be recording the next episode right after I end this one. So if you notice I did something wrong or you wanted a follow up question, I probably won't answer it in the next episode, but I will answer it in the comments and probably the episode after that. All right, we are approaching our $12,000 amount. You don't have to, uh, you might be like pretty good in the amount of money that you have. The reason that I am struggling right now is because I started doing all of this road expansion and you don't have to do that to start. This is how I just want to do it. Helps me plan, helps me think, helps me understand how I want to zone out. And I think that this is important for how my brain works and how I like to think about setting up everything. You don't have to do it this way though. You could um, have done this in a bite-sized chunk and just gone out to here and not planned all these roads and you would have been saving a lot more money. You'd probably have a lot more income coming in and that's totally okay too. There's no real rush in cities unless you're trying to do a speed run. We I mean, look at all, look in our communities and notice how many people are walking because of how uh, well we've laid everything out. It's kept them out of their cars, which is good and got them on foot. That keeps traffic clear for uh, commercial traffic. And so, now we're gonna place the fire station over here. I'm gonna put it pretty center because I don't think we'll end up putting one over on this side uh, until we maybe expand out more over here when we eventually buy this tile. So for now, we're gonna place it over here. I'm gonna place it on this road right across the street from these homes, just like that. You notice how they all get happy because they are in the zone of effect. It is, even though uh, it is a little ways away, the road will glow. Even though these homes were a little too far out of it, they still got some happy faces because they are very close to it. And that is good and beneficial for them. So yeah, that's the end of the episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to start recording the next episode right after this. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to drop a follow, subscribe, click on the other videos. Uh, if you didn't watch the first episode, Go back and watch it if you're completely new to City Skylines. And I hope that you guys learn something new. And I hope that we are learning together. And if as we make mistakes, we learn and grow together. All right. Thanks. Have a good one, guys.